The Russian Revolution, taking place from 1917 to 1923. The Russian Revolution helped contribute to the founding of what we know today as Communist Russia, shaped by the hands like those of Vladimir Lenin and Joseph Stalin. But let's start from the beginning. Joseph Stalin was a very political man, down to his bones. He was very harsh and was a dangerous person to cross. While he was a young man, he enrolled in a seminary school, where he first came into contact with the extreme socialist writings of Karl Marx and Vladimir Lenin. Let the ruling classes tremble at a communistic revolution. The proletarians have nothing to lose but their chains. They have a world to win. Working men of all countries, unite. Wow, this is genius. I want to be part of this groundbreaking revolution. After Joseph Stalin left the seminary school, instead of returning home, he ended up joining the Social Democratic Labor Party and worked full time for the movement. Joseph Stalin wasn't an amazing speaker like Vladimir Lenin or an intellectual person like Leon Trotsky, but he had one thing in his favor. He was brutal and a master of calling meetings, organizing strikes, and publishing leaflets. He raised money for the organization through kidnappings and robberies. Oh, no, no, sir, but what if we had no time for that? I have a revolution to fund. By 1917, the Bolsheviks, a revolutionary group led by Vladimir Lenin, were starting to take complete power of Russia. They were inspired by a Marxist train of political thought. They were in favor of deconstructing the capitalist society that they lived in under the rule of Tsar Nicholas II. People were beginning to hate the monarchy and hated everything Nicholas II did. They wanted the power redistributed to the working classes and were tired of feeling swept aside by the higher classes. The gap between the poor and working classes of Russia and the higher-ups was growing increasingly more un unignorable. The common people were angry. The Bolshevik Revolution was underway. Who are we? The, the Bolsheviks! Bolsheviks! What do we want? The working class to have the power! What else do we want? Equality! And who do we hate? Nicholas II! Communism! 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 communism. Peace, Peace, land, and bread! Alright, go get him, boys! Sir, yes, sir! In July 17, 1918, the Bolsheviks murdered Nicholas, his family, and their closest retainers, putting an end to the three-century-old Romanov dynasty. The people are revolting against me. They've lost faith in me. They want the power to go to the working people. Oh no, who's that? I hope it's not the Bolsheviks. Oh well, come in. The Bolsheviks renamed themselves the Communist Party of Russia. And meanwhile, while all of this was happening, Joseph Stalin was moving up the ranks and by then was appointed to the newly created office of General Secretary of the Communist Party. Though not a significant post at the time, it gave Stalin control over all party member appointments, which allowed him to build his base. With Russia being declared as the Soviet Union, Lenin was first to take his new throne rooted in communist ideas. Lenin ruled the newfound Soviet Union from 1922 until his death in 1924. On his deathbed, Lenin was actually scared of Stalin gaining all the power, for Stalin was a very violent man. But still, Joseph Stalin took Lenin's place and ruled over the Soviet Union starting in 1924. Joseph Stalin launched something called the Great Purge in an attempt to destroy any opposition he could possibly have. Potential rivals were exiled and or executed, including the presumed Lenin successor, Leon Trotsky. 
In the 1920s and 30s, Joseph Stalin also decided to collectivize farms in attempts to accelerate food production, even though that land was also given back to the peasants during the Bolshevik movements. Anyone resisting his orders and ideas would be swiftly executed or sent to the gulag. Joseph Stalin, we don't have any food left since you took back the farms and only focused on industrialization. Our agriculture is failing. We're in a famine. Are you complaining? Oh no, Mr. Stalin. But it's just that you've killed millions of people. Russia is in a complete famine and millions upon millions of people continue to die every day from their negligence. You are complaining. To the gulag you go! Mr. Stalin, have mercy on us. Indeed, because Joseph Stalin wanted to focus on industrializing Russia so much, Millions of people died from famine because agriculture was swept under the rug. Joseph Stalin wanted to make Russia a world superpower. In the end, there were positives and negatives from his rule. While Joseph Stalin did turn peasant Russia into a world threat for the West and surrounding countries, Joseph Stalin is responsible for more than 20 million deaths that were a result of his violent rise to power. During World War II, Joseph Stalin adored Hitler and tried to form an alliance with him. But Hitler detested Stalin and launched a surprise blitzkrieg on the Soviet Union. In efforts to fend off the Germans, Stalin switched sides and joined Britain and the United States in their fight against the Nazis. Stalin helped contribute to World War II because he was a part of the huge defeat of Hitler because of the superpower that Russia had become under him. But again, there were millions of casualties and deaths under his reign. Joseph Stalin continued his reign of fear up until 1953, when he died from a stroke.